good morning children i hope you were able to solve the questions based on the climate of india we'll start with the chap next chapter that is soil resources now this is a very easy chapter because we studied about the soil before but the only thing which we are going to study a little different from here from your previous years is the types of soil and what are the qualities that soil possesses along with which crops can grow in that soil best now so what is a soil we all know that the loose rock material forming the upper surface of the earth on which our lives depend directly or indirectly now when i say directly or indirectly indirectly it means directly means it gives us plants it gives us crops it gives us trees that is the direct use of the soil indirectly means those trees those grasses and very various other crops whether they are food or cash crops they help us in keeping our animals alive along with that we also get a lot of raw material for industries from the soil for example if we talk about the grass and jowar bajra which is given to our animals and they give us meat and milk products apart from that honey is gained by the honey bees then we get lark from trees then we get wool from sheep eggs from hen so all these are dependent on plants and therefore i say that directly or indirectly we are benefited or dependent on soil now all this is possible because of the formation of soil and formation of soil is called as pedogenesis that is the term and when we study soil it is called as pedology now we all have studied in class 9 when we studied the chapter of weathering that soil forms by the breaking down or decomposition of rocks now this weathering decomposition or breaking down of rocks finally gives us soil though it is a very very long process it doesn't happen in a year or two sometimes it takes hundreds and thousands of years for a rock to break down and give us the soil this we all have studied earlier now what are the factors which affect the formation of soil the first and the foremost factor which affects the soil formation is climate we have studied this again i'm saying we have studied this in detail in class 9 if you remember we studied that when the temperature keeps on increasing and decreasing from day to night the soil particles or sorry the rock expands and contracts it expands during the day because of the heat of the sun and then contracts when the sun goes down and the temperature also reduces so this continuous expanding and contracting of the rock makes the outer layer of the rock weak and therefore it breaks into many pieces and slowly and steadily these pieces also break down further into finer particles thereby giving us the soil rain also pelts down or forces the rock to break into many pieces and therefore we get soil then of course the kind of rock which is breaking down into many pieces is the kind of soil which we will get if the rock has iron the soil will also contain iron if the rock has potassium the soil will contain more of potassium so the configuration or the quality of the soil or the composition of the soil is dependent on the kind of soil or the kind of rock it breaks down if the soil is present in hilly areas the rain impact is more it flows down and therefore we have very thin soil on the layers or on the slopes of the hill and of course time as i have spoken to you earlier also that soil formation is a very very time consuming process it does not happen in a few years it takes hundreds and thousands of years to happen now this is what all is written in your book also i would prefer that you go through this now on the second page of this chapter i don't want you to go through this soil composition or the soil profile this is not in your syllabus we'll come straight to the third page of your book where we have given you the major types of soil though there are more than four types of soil but in our syllabus we only have four of them and therefore we're going to study in detail about these four soils only alluvial black red 
and laterite soil so we'll study about these soils in detail one by one now alluvial soil is also called as transported soil or riverine soil now why is it called as riverine is because it is brought down by the rivers from the mountains and deposited on the plains that same way because since it means transported from the mountain to the plain therefore sometimes we refer it to as transported soil also so riverine and transported both are used for the term alluvial so do not get confused sometimes they will ask you a question say that which is a riverine soil or give the characteristics of the riverine soil or the transported soil they do not mean anything else they mean only alluvial soil now alluvial soil is rich in humus i hope you all know what humus is human is the decomposed organic matter which makes the soil very fertile and a little dark in color it is also rich in potash it is also rich in lime and it is deficient in nitrogen and sometimes it has more quality of phosphorus and therefore it tends to be phosphoric so the first type of soil the characteristics rich in humus potash and lime deficient in nitrogen and tends to be phosphoric i would like you all to underline this here in the characteristic of the soil transported very coarse in upper valley region rich in humus potash and lime and so as is agriculturally very important then the fourth point sorry the fifth point in the next page it is deficient in nitrogen and tends to be phosphoric very very important can you see that you have underlined this very clearly then the alluvial soil can be divided into two parts that is khadar and bangar now khadar is the new alluvium and bangar is the old alluvium khadar is made up of fine silt and clay and bangar is made up of pebbles and kankar khadar is gray in color bangar is yellow in sorry khadar is yellow in color and bangar is gray in color khadar is very fertile and bangar is not very fertile all this is given to you in your book also if you refer to page 40 bangar and khadar i want you to mark the first second fourth and fifth point here and here also first second fourth and fifth point only you need not do any other points here then uh, since alluvial is present in the delta regions in the northern india and some it is also since rivers are flowing in the peninsular part of india as well therefore we have two different types of alluvial soil one in the north india and second in the peninsular india if you pay attention here this is the map which shows you the alluvial soil this area comes under northern plains and this soil which you find on the deltaite regions here we call this as the soil present in the peninsular india so the properties of this and this are different now how are they different alluvial soil of northern india is formed by river indus ganga brahmaputra and their tributaries they are porous and they are paint yellow in color and consist of clay and organic matter while the alluvial soil of the peninsular india godavari krishna narmada and tapi form alluvial soils of this region they are non porous if you see they are porous in north india and non porous in the peninsular part they are faint yellow in color here and they are dark in color why are they dark in color because we all know that the peninsular plateau consist of black soils so when the rivers are flowing over the peninsular plateau they sometimes get mixed up with the black soil and therefore the color becomes dark so these are dark in color that these rivers flow over black soil and they are also clay in nature so they consist of clay but they are not clay and here they are clay in nature so i would request you all to go through this then the regions where the soil is found is the plains of ganga yamuna indus and brahmaputra make sure that when the regions are mentioned you are talking about certain parts of india and when states are mentioned you give punjab haryana uttar pradesh you can also write west bengal here 
so you have to be very very careful when the regions are mentioned you don't write the states and when the states are mentioned you do not write the regions and the crops which can grow very nicely here are rice wheat jute and pulses so please underline this accordingly in your books and make sure that you read the first few pages of the chapter that chapter 1 2 3 and 4 so pages 4 four pages of the third chapter must be read and then we'll take this chapter further